Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to learn about collection data types. So we have seen a couple of data types in our previous videos, like for example, string, numeric, and Boolean. Now we're going to look at a specific type of data types, which are called collection data types. And there are four main collection data types that are there in Python. Number one, list. Second, we have tuples. Third is dictionaries. And fourth is sets. And we're going to look at the main attributes of each of these data types and how can we create them in this video. So without wasting any further time, let's just quickly jump into it. The first collection data type is called a list. Now list is just a sequence of data points which are stored in a single variable. And this is how we create a list. Let's say you enter a variable name and the variable name I'm entering is cars and I'm going to store a couple of car manufacturing companies into this variable and we will store it as a list. Okay. In order to initiate a list, you need to insert a square bracket here and then enter your values. So let's say Toyota. And then you separate your values with a comma. And the second entry would be, let's say, Honda. And then the third entry would be Nissan. Okay. Now, when I execute this, this has successfully created a list. Now, if I just enter the list name here, this will show me the values that are there in that particular list item. Now comes the attributes that a list has. There are three main attributes. First one, a list is an ordered list of items. Now, when I say ordered, that means that each and every item within a list is indexed. Okay. So in my previous videos, we saw how indexing works. Now this is where we can use that concept and apply. Okay. So for example, I want to extract the second item from this list, which is Honda, right? So all I have to do is I have to just enter cars. And since our indexing starts with zero, we should enter one and this will give me Honda. Similarly, if you want to extract the last item in a list, what you can do is you can say cars and use a negative number. So minus one represents the last item in your list. And similarly, if you want to extract the second last item, you can just simply write minus two. Now comes the second attribute of the list, which is changeable, or this is mutable, which means once you've created a list, you can make changes to it by, let's say, deleting values or appending new values or replacing values. So how do we do that? So let's say you want to delete an item from your list. All you have to do is enter the keyword del, which stands for delete and then enter your list name and inside the square bracket, enter the index number that you want to delete. Let's say I want to delete the first item. So I'm going to say zero and press enter. Now, if I enter cars again and see, I only have two items in this list now. Now, if you want to add new values to this list, you can do that as well. So to add new values, you can use two methods. First one is append. So I can just write cars dot append and I can add a new car name or brand name. So now if I see cars again, it will have added the new item here at the end. There's another way where you can add item to an existing list. You just write cars dot extend, open a bracket and then within that open a square bracket and enter the new values. So let's say BMW Mercedes. Okay. You enter it. And if I check the values now, this will have all the items added to the list now. And please note that addition of values is not just limited to simple strings. You can also add two lists together into a new list. So for example, if I have another list item by the name of cars one, and I have value in it, for example, Volvo. Okay. Now I can create a new list cars two, and add these two lists together. So cars and cars one, and you have to separate both of the lists with a comma. And when I check the values in cars two, this should have all the values that we have 
including the new list. Now the third attribute within a list is that it allows duplicate. For example, let's add Honda again in cars. So I'm going to use the append method here and I'm going to say cars dot append Honda. Now if I check the values in cars, it will have Honda twice in this list. Now there are many other operations that we can do with a list. For example, sorting a list and slicing a list, but we will cover those in future videos. For now, I just want you to understand the basic, how we create a list and how we can maneuver through a list. Now the second type of collection data type is called tuples. Now again, these are another type of data which contains sequential values. However, these are immutable or not changeable. So let me give you an example. I'm going to create a new tuple called color. And the way we create a tuple is by entering a parenthesis instead of a square bracket. Okay. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to say red, green and yellow. Okay. I've created this tuple now. However, in the case of list, we had a couple of options like append and delete, right? But this is not available in the case of tuples. So even if I try to delete something like this color square bracket and zero, let's say, and if I press execute, it will give me an error saying that tuple object doesn't support this deletion. Same goes for append as well. By default, a list will have an option to apply a method of sorting or appending onto the list, but a tuple does not have that. As stated, this is immutable or unchangeable. Okay. You cannot alter the values within a tuple once it is created. The second attribute of tuple is that it also allows duplicates. So let's say I create a tuple once again, and I'm going to say red, red, green. Okay. When I enter this and if I check the value of this tuple, this will show you the duplicate values as well. All right, moving on. The third type of collection data type is dictionaries. Now dictionaries are a unique kind of collection data type because this contains data in a key value pair. And what do I mean by key value pair? So let me give you an example and create a dictionary first. So I'm going to create a dictionary by the name of students. And this student dictionary will have a student name and the score that they attained in their class. Okay. So the way we create it, it is by using a curly bracket now. So in the list, we used a square bracket in the tuple. We used a parenthesis, but in dictionary, we are using a curly bracket. This is how we separate or we identify that it's a dictionary. So let's say student a has scored 54 marks. So this is how we write a key value pair. So this being the key and this is the value against it. So it can have strings, numeric, booleans, etc. right? So you can capture any type of value in this and you separate the second item in your key value pair by a comma similar to the other data types. Okay. So I'm going to use the second item as B and the value for that, let's say 75 and again, C value for that is 42. Okay. Now I have created this dictionary by the name of students. The first attribute of a dictionary is that it is ordered. Okay. Which means the indexing concept will work here, but to get a value out of a dictionary, instead of writing the index number, we write the key to get the value out of it. So this is an example. So let's say I want to see the score attained by student B. So I'm going to write students open a square bracket. And within this, I'm going to write my key. And when I enter, it will give me 75. The second attribute of dictionaries are changeable or mutable. Okay. Which means we can make changes to a dictionary in order to do that. What we have to do is let's say, for example, I want to add a new value to the dictionary. So I'm going to write students. And then within square bracket, I'm going to write the key, which is D let's say, for example, and I'm going to write a new value here and press enter. Now, when I check the students dictionary, it would have added the new key.
key value pair inside the dictionary as you see here replacing or updating a value is also very simple in dictionary so let's say i want to change the score attained by b from 75 to 62 so what i have to do is i have to write the dictionary name obviously and then enter the key so this in this case b and then i'm going to enter the new value now if i check the dictionary again it's going to give me the new value here the third attribute of a dictionary is that it do not allow duplicates so let's say for example i add a new value to students and i'm going to use the same key value pair that we already have in the students dictionary a is equal to 54 and if i do that and if i check the values again you would notice that the new value has not been added that is because this same key value pair already existed and dictionaries do not allow duplicate values all right perfect now moving on to the last and the final collection data type it is known as sets now the way we initiate or define a set is using a curly bracket but here we did not have any key value pair similar to dictionary right we just have to enter the value that we enter in a typical list or a tuple so this is how we do it i'm going to create a new set by the name of category and we use a curly bracket here but instead of a key value pair we can just enter the values however the attributes that it has needs to be understood so that you can decide when to use sets and when to use the other data types the first attribute is that it is unordered so indexing will not work on this so even if i write category square bracket zero let's say for example this will give me an error stating that this does not support this second is that this is unchangeable so similar to tuples the items within a set after creation cannot be altered okay so we cannot add any values we cannot replace any values or anything of that sort and the last attribute of sets is that it also does not allow duplicates so let's say if I add another item here, A, and run this, and want to check the value in category, it will still show me A, B, and C. It will not add the new item which I added because it's a duplicate of the first item. So these are the four different collection data types that are available in Python. And understanding each of their attributes is important for you to implement them whenever required, right? because you should be in a position to identify in which situation you would like to use which data type. So I hope I was able to clearly explain you the differences and how you create each of these collection data types. In case you have any doubts or queries, feel free to comment down below. And if this content was helpful for you, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell icon so that you do not miss any content that I upload in future. And as always, Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.